Hello, I'm Shirin Hashim, the CEO and founder of the award-winning Fashion Community Week in San Francisco. Our platform offers support and opportunities for emerging and underrepresented fashion designers. Today, we would like to introduce you to our first ever interview series, Fashion Community Speak. In this series, we will be interviewing global fashion designers and industry experts that will share topics such as current affairs, future of the fashion industry, as well as their expert advice with you. Today, our guest is Christopher Ategeika, an award-winning serial entrepreneur, as well as the founder of the brand Accent, based in San Francisco. Chris has won many international awards and has been featured on some of the prestigious platforms such as TED, United Nations, Forbes, and has been honored by the World Economic Forum as a young global leader. Welcome to Fashion Community Speak, Christopher. We are utterly excited to have you as our guest today. So how are you? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Great, great. So, you know, I'm sure everyone is excited as much as I am to hear from you, to hear about you. How about you start with telling us a bit about yourself, such as, who is Christopher? What is the brand accent and the type of collection that you produce? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Shirini, and your team for putting this together. Appreciate you very much. Um, so, who am I? Well... I would say I'm a son, I'm a brother, um, and most important, I'm a human being. Um, out in the world, I am an entrepreneur, I'm an engineer, and um, a lead designer for a fashion brand called Accent. Um, so Accent is an ethical, sustainable fashion label. It's based in San Francisco, California, um, and we design both men and women's like slim fit blazers uh, for the lean look, the lean professional look. Um, we design for um, young professionals, tech executives, movie stars, and sports stars, and anyone really who is interested in looking clean. Um, our mission is uh, to make you look good while providing a gift of access to opportunities to kids in underserved regions of the world. As we like to say as accent, you know, accent equals access. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I had actually forgot to mention earlier, you had launched your collection, your first collection with us um, three seasons ago. And Absolutely, yes. Such an amazing collection. It was so vibrant, so so elegant. And um, in fact, uh, Christopher had showcased with us twice on our Fashion Community Week runway. Of course, um, we will be um, sharing some of your work with us on our social media so people get to see your beautiful collection. Now, tell me a little bit about the charity aspect, uh, if you want to elaborate a bit more about, um, about it. The, um, I believe it's the Accent Foundation, am I correct? It's ac Accent Philanthropies, yes. So, accent yeah. Philanthropies, yes. Yes. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, so with with our work at Accent, um, we aim to improve the welfare of vulnerable youth in underserved regions of the world. Um, I'm a former beneficiary of such a type of generosity after I lost both of my parents at a young age. Um, it's kind of a way of paying it forward for me. Um, so with your purchase, when you purchase an Accent brand, um, you know, with you know, we partner with a few individuals across the globe, and Accent gives access to opportunities. And this manifests itself in two ways. Um, there is a way of giving young folks access to education, and this is mostly paying their tuition and also providing uh, physical products like scholastic materials so they can access um, the education they can't afford. Um, and then the second component is vocational training. Um, so we give a second chance to youth who dropped out of school uh, because they couldn't afford it or maybe somehow the system failed them. Um, through our partners, uh, we focus on on-job training, uh, vocational training. So things like tailoring, mechanic, carpentry, 
um, you know, so that we can support individuals who dropped out of school, but they have other talents that they could offer to the world. So it enables them to make a living um, right after they graduate. Right, to become independent. Independent, oh, yeah. That's That's so amazing, Christopher. I didn't know this um, um, aspect of your philanthropy. I... I have a whole more no, a new respect for you. I mean, Thank wow, you. this is really so, so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing uh, a bit uh, uh, more about it. Now, um, I wanted to, let's talk a bit about your background. You know, um, considering that um, your background is not uh, from the fashion industry. I mean, I, 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 I've, I know, but I know everybody else wants to know. So please share, share away. Um. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's fascinating. The way I got inspired to start Accent, um, it started, it's kind of like inspired by two components, and they're both part of my life. The first component is my grandmother. Wow. And the second component is Silicon Valley. So um, being an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, it has a little imprint on you as an individual. So as you know, if you go to New York City, uh, you'll find suits and ties, on Wall Street, and that's the East Coast style, right? Um, and then you come here on the West Coast, you find T-shirts and jeans. Um, so so I, felt, <laughs> I felt like there's a huge opportunity somewhere in the middle uh, where you can create a clean, casual look, um, you know, to give that's people... <laughs> That, that's exactly. Um, it's good for the office. It's good for meeting on you know, going to a meeting or maybe even going to a date. Um, so my grandmother taught me how to sew when I was young. Wow. And she's also kind of one of those OGs of the recycling. Uh, she would not let any piece of fabric go to waste um, or go to downstairs. So she always found a way to sew pieces of cloth into something that's uh, useful. So one of my treasured pieces of cloth outfit really I've ever owned was made by her and this was a sweater um I call it the sweater of many colors it was multicolored it's because she was able to repurpose many thrown away pieces of fabric and made a beautiful sweater for me we need to um, see this in, <laughs> yeah I will pull a picture no old pictures I was very young um but in a way she inspired me to become the sustainability warrior that I am today so when I found an accent, uh, the drive was to build uh, a product and a brand um, that has positive society change and sustainability at the core, okay? Um, all garments are designed and made with the ethical and sustainable standards in mind. Uh, they are produced in limited quanti quantities in order to combine value with quality. Um, you know, it's a place where we make pieces that are clean, presentable, sustainable, and very powerful. So that accent for you. Wow, so amazing, so amazing. Um, not only the collection is a wondrous collection from outside, but behind the scenes, how you are producing each piece is just marvelous. So, you know what? I'm so excited to see your um, um, any upcoming collection that's coming up. Of course, um, if you'd like to share a bit uh, about it, um, uh, please do. Um, you know, but since we are on the topic of sustainability, I wanted to ask you something. You know, of course, um, you know, the fashion industry is the number two most polluted industry in the world but of course um people are getting a lot more um conscious um <clears throat> in their um shopping um in choosing the garments the brands that are more sustainably more ethically made now due to you know the current pandemic um there has been even a bigger focus on sustainability because uh, consumers are adhering to more and more sustainable choices in their daily lives, um, specifically now shopping for apparel. Um, do you think that um, this is here to stay or the pan pandemic reverses and everybody goes back to reversing to back to the old habit of shopping? Well, you know, and uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, really uh, at the core accent sits, um, you know, 
at the plate and the foundation of sustainability. So, um, you know, I truly believe the future of fashion and the future of humanity is and must be regenerative and must be sustainable, period. Anyone operating outside of this mindset will be left behind. Um, and I believe that all the brands must work to improve every single aspect of their product life cycle. They must use sustainable materials, store and transport clothing responsibly, right. and do their best to ensure that items can be repaired or recycled. Our humanity depends on it, and our planet depends on it. So it's here, and it's here to stay. And it is our responsibility, most importantly. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing that because I feel like that is the mindset that we should all, uh, not only from the fashion designer perspective, but as well as the consumer perspective, that it has to come as a merge for us to, as a community, to uh, make a better, a cleaner environment, um, a sustainable environment for us, you know? Um, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, so now, uh, you know, uh, I want to ask you a bit um, back to that question of, are you currently working on a collection? Um, yeah, no, so the, the, somehow <laughs> the pandemic put us in a different mindset where you right. have to kind of right. start dreaming up new design and new designs and come up with new thoughts. But, um, you know, normally, when you're designing something, you're gearing towards a show of some kind. Uh, and now that all shows are put to pause, um, I'm doing mostly design work on paper, but I haven't done a whole lot of the sewing part. Um, so as soon as the world opens up, uh, uh, we have a few things in the making that I will let you know about. Wonderful. You know, that's actually a lot of designers are on the same boat. And then one of the other elements that I've heard, I mean, of course, you know, there's this spring, summer, fall, winter collection, as you've mentioned, since all the shows are canceled at the moment, if, um, a lot of designers are also taking a step back and thinking to create something called the seasonless collection, something that is not dictating to the color, the patterns, or um, what we have foreseen for that current trend is no longer a trend because the trend has been missing because of the current stop um, in everything that's happening. So that actually brings me to my final question for you that I am sure everybody who is viewing is probably dying to hear from you some of your expertise and advice. So to be more direct, do you have any advice you would like to leave forth for the audience uh, specifically the emerging uh, fashion designers who are watching you right now that um, um, in the area of how to cope with current pandemic um, and all the social changes that we're living in and how to overcome and stay afloat with their fashion businesses. What is your thought? What is your advice as being a successful fashion brand owner? Um, thank you. Um, great question. Um, my advice to upcoming, uh, you know, fashion designers, uh, is that we really need to reevaluate and redirect your energy. Um, it's an amazing time right now to create, dream up new ideas and new designs. Um, you know, the next thing I would advise um, emerging and um, designers is that normally people say cash is king. I want to say cash is queen as well. <laughs> um, you know, keeping it simple. Think cash flow. Uh, reduce costs when necessary. Cash flow is the life and blood. And if you manage it well, well and you manage your cash flow effectively today, you'll be in the position or you position yourself as well to be, uh, you know, ready to go when the upturn happens. Sure. Um, and lastly, perhaps, um, 
the best advice that I can give, if I may say so, um, to all the emerging designers out there is that tough times never last, but tough times, tough times never last, but tough people do. I want to repeat that because it's oh, very important. I need to write that down. Could you please repeat? <laughs> I will repeat that because I think it's very important. Tough times never last, but tough people do. do. That's it. That's going to be do my we... slogan now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we, I'm stealing we, that we, one. <laughs> we, yeah, um, so, and, and, you know, the right now with the pandemic, we all went down together. Right. And we're all going to come back up together. Right. Yeah, if we're in this together. If you stay focused, absolutely. Yeah. If you stay focused long term, your long term success of your designs and your company will thrive and they will be around if you stay focused and know that you're not alone. Um, you know, so this crisis will end and the actions you take now should position you to prosper as we come to the other side of the crisis. So don't, you know, be down on yourself. And just know tough times never last, but tough people do. Wonderful. Oh, my gosh, Christopher. That was just absolutely amazing. And you know what? I've got to learn so much more about you today. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today um so i just want to share something with the audience that um we um this video um is available under fashion community week on instagram facebook linkedin linkedin twitter and youtube and um, if you go to any of our social media platforms you will see the times but for um and it's going to be every thursday and every friday on all of these platforms so stay tuned every week to see all of these wonderful wonderful fashion industry tycoons such as Christopher to learn to uh, hear and to hear and then share with everyone in this industry thank you so much for watching us today and we will see you next week Thank you, Christopher, for, uh, for being with us today. Have a wonderful week and uh, see you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.